I'm going to explain about our paper, an oscillatory pipelining mechanism supporting previewing during visual exploration and reading. So this is a paper out in Trends in Cognitive Neuroscience. So it's an opinion paper putting forward some ideas on the neuronal mechanism supporting uh, visual exploration and reading. So this is work together with Yali Pan, Stephen Frissen and Lin Wang. So Yali and Stephen are at the Center for Human Brain Health and Lynn, uh, she's at uh, Tufts University. So, um, you're probably all aware that when we are presented with a visual scene, our eyes um, are moving around to explore that scene. However, it turns out that our eyes are typically moving to meaningful parts of that scene. So that actually poses a conundrum, because um, how um, do our brains know what is the important part of this scene uh, before it's fully perceived. Uh, a similar conundrum holds for reading, so also there our eyes are moving from word to word. However, sometimes words are skipped, for instance like the in this case, uh, because that word might not be particularly meaningful. However, this skipping also implies that we are previewing words already before our eyes are moving to them in order to decide whether to saccade to them. Or not. Um, so uh, there's previewing going on uh, during uh, visual exploration and this previewing basically means that while we are fixating uh, on a, in this case the man here, uh, there's a future target location being previewed um, and that uh, then results in a decision of the circadian system whether to move the eyes to that uh, part of the scene or not. However, it's not known um, in which detail this previewing is going on, or let's say that that's, that's a topic of, of, of actual exploration. Um, nevertheless, when uh, doing these uh, visual explorations and reading, there are some serious computational challenges uh, to our visual system. First of all, we circuit three to four si times per second. Right? So that means already within 250 milliseconds we need to process the object that we fixate at but also make the decision where to circuit next. Furthermore, there is the, the, the bottleneck in the visual hierarchy. Right? So there is a limit uh, to how many objects can be processed at the same time because as you go down the cortical hierarchy in the ventral stream you have these more and more complex representations and it's hard to conceive that they can, can uh, allow for, for parallel processing of, of more complex objects. Uh, so how, how is this achieved? Right? So what we are going to argue for is a pipelining mechanism uh, uh, supporting this kind of um, fast visual exploration uh, required um, when we are observing visual scenes and when we read. Okay, uh, so um, a few more words on the temporal constraints during visual exploration. So say now that uh, we are fixating at the lady here. While do, doing so, uh, there's the features that needs to be processed. Uh, that group, for instance, be color, and eventually the object will be identified. Uh, it could be in future from face area, for instance, where the face of the woman is being identified, right? So it has been shown uh, both from intracranial recordings, but also using multivariate approaches to EEG and MEG data, that this uh, sort of object identification can be done within 150 milliseconds. Um, so um, at the same time, it takes about 250 milliseconds uh, between each circuits. Um, it also takes about 100 milliseconds for a circuit to be uh, initiated and executed. So that leaves 150 milliseconds to make a decision on where to circuit next. Right? So within 150 milliseconds, when fixating on the lady, uh, we have to identify uh, the, the, the lady here, but we also have to make a decision where to circuit next, for instance, to the dog here. Right? So how is that achieved? Well, it's all about buying time, right? So uh, one way to buy time is to take premium into account. So already when the boy here is being um, 
uh, uh, fixated at and being processed, while uh, then some previewing might be going on, uh, giving a head start to the processing of the lady. So it has been shown that this sort of previewing can reduce the identification time uh, to about uh, 110 to 120 milliseconds, right? Uh, nevertheless, um, this scheme here also supposes that uh, up to two, uh, two or more objects are being uh, processed in parallel. Uh, the same temporal constraints hold for reading. So it has also been shown that within 150 milliseconds, it's, it's, uh, the, the semantic information can be, uh, uh, supposedly the, the semantic information of a red word is um, identified within the brain. Right, uh, but of course, first, uh, uh, um, the in, in this case, when reading, first the orthography of the word has to be identified, maybe in visual word form area, and then there's the lexical and semantic uh, processing going on. Um, again, uh, when we read, it, it might be only leave uh, 250 milliseconds between each saccade. Again, it takes 100 milliseconds to initiate and execute the saccade, even 150 milliseconds to, to decide whether we should move our eye uh, to the next word. In this case, when we fixate and jump, uh, then uh, should we move our eyes to, to over or not. Again, previewing uh, will help to buy some time. Um, so if you now consider uh, processing the word over, uh, it could have already been previewed uh, when we uh, fixated at the word jumped, right? Um, and this uh, previewing is essential for reducing the processing time such that there is uh, more time available for deciding uh, where to circuit next. But again, the previewing um, implies that more than one object has to be uh, processed by the brain. So, how is all this achieved? Well, uh, there's uh, two main ideas out there, and one is um, serial processing uh, is, is, is going on, the other is that this sort of process is uh, supported by parallel processing. So, the serial processing uh, would imply that, I'll just uh, should tell the example for reading, is that when we fixate and jumped, Jumped is, is being fully processed um, in terms of orthograph orthography all the way to the sem semantic identification, right? And when that is uh, achieved, uh, over can then be, be processed after our eyes have moved to the next word, right? So um, this is, is one possibility and um, for instance the, the, the so-called easy reader model uh, is, is, is uh, supporting this scheme. Then other people say, no, wait a minute, we think that uh, uh, visual processing during reading is supported by a parallel mechanism. Um, so that would imply that when we not only um, uh, process one word at a time, but it could be multiple words within the, the uh, multiple words being processed in parallel at the same time, right? And an argument would be here, like our brains have a lot of neurons, so it, 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 it has the resources for doing some sort of parallel processing. However, the, the parallel processing do conflict with the, with, 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 with the, with the tight hierarchy uh, of, 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 the, of the ventral uh, system. Nevertheless, um, there's different instantiations of the, the parallel processing, for instance, the SWIFT model. However, what we are proposing is an alternative, namely a pipelining mechanism. So, what do I mean by that? Well, um, consider the, the, the lady and the guy here, uh, they are washing some dishes. Um, so the serial processing would be that the lady picks up a plate, she washes it, she passes it to the guy, he dries it, he stacks it, and then the, the lady picks up the next plate, right? Uh, um, the parallel processing, however, would um, imply that the lady might be trying to wash several plates at the same time, while the guy is trying to dry several plates at the same time. So it turns out that there is a more efficient way of doing this and that is that the lady picks up the plate, she, dry, she washes it, she passes it to the guy, he dries it and while he's drying the, the plate uh, she is picking up the next plate and so forth. So this latter process is what we call pipelining or multiplexing. And what we argue is that a similar mechanism is supporting uh, uh, visual processing in the brain during visual exploration. 
So here is um, what we mean by pipe, what we mean by pipelining during reading. So say now uh, that uh, we are fixating on the word jumped. Um, there is some sort of orthographic processing going on. After that's completed, uh, jump is moving on in a visual hierarchy. It could be for the for for, for the lexical and eventually semantic uh, processing. However, as soon as the word moves up in the hierarchy, that leaves resources open to process the next word that would be over. So that then the next uh, the, the over can then be processed processed at the orthographic level, while jumped at the same time is being processed at the lexical level. Right? So this is basically what we mean by the pipelining mechanism, namely that there's different stages to the processing in, in the visual hierarchy, and one word is moving up through the hierarchy, and that leaves room for the next word to be processed. Right? And that next word is being processed in terms of being previewed, and then what then would it be part of the decision on whether to circate to that word or not. Um, um, this pipelining mechanism um, shows up uh, many places. Uh, for instance, if you think about architectures of computers, the CPU, there, there's uh, pipelining mechanisms going on in which the CPU is reading information from memory, does some execution, uh, according to the code and then uh, writes uh, back to, to the computer memory. So also here there is a pipelining me mechanism go going on where the execution instructions uh, of, of, of is being done to at, at the same time as the fetch and decode uh, instructions uh, from some other information and so forth. Uh, what I want to bring across here is that these pipeline, pipelining mechanisms require intimate timing, of course, right? In order for the information to be passed through the different stages in the hierarchy. Um, so what we argue is that this pipelining uh, it needs to be supported by a timing mechanism, and what better to support this uh, timing is so so what, what, what so so what what can better support this timing than uh, brain oscillations and basically what we argue is that alpha oscillations are involved in supporting the the, the timing of the processing so here here's an example for what i mean so uh, consider here um, that we are viewing this picture uh, we might be fixating on the lady and there's a decision to whether to circate to the dog or not when fixating on the lady, um, there's first the visual features being processed. It could be color uh, being processed in, 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 in for instance, v, v, V4, but of course there's also other uh, basic features to be processed, right? Um, a little later, um, so, so this is done early in the visual hierarchy, this information is being passed on and eventually in object selective cortex, um, the, 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 the woman itself will be identified. However, when the information is passed on, that allows for the uh, processing of the visual features of the dog, right? And then a little later, that, that can be processed in object selective cortex because then uh, the, 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 the woman has been identified. Again, uh, a pipelining mechanism. Um, and we think that this pipeline me me mechanism is clocked by alpha oscillations. And we have some very specific ideas for the neurophysiology supporting that, but you will have to go to the paper to, to, to read about the details of that. Another uh, key important uh, aspect to this mechanism is that we think that saccades also need to be locked to the face of the alpha oscillations. Right? So the moving of the eyes and the incoming new information needs to be um, uh, uh, coordinated in time with the visual processing. So this implies that the saccades need to be locked to the face of the ongoing alpha oscillations. We make exactly the same case for, for, for reading. So in this case, um, say that you fix it on the word jumps. Uh, there's the orth orthographic features of jump being processed first and then they pass on uh, to, 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 to the lexical, lexical semantic identification, maybe in an anterior timbre lobe. After uh, that, um, processing has moved on down the hierarchy, then for instance OA can be previewed and the orthographic features of OA can be processed, right? 
um, and then a little later ova can then uh, be processed at, at the lexicosemantic level after the processing of jump has been completed and so forth, right? Uh, so again, uh, a multiplexing pipelining mechanism organized by ongoing alpha oscillations. Um, also here during reading we argue that the case need to be locked to the face of ongoing alpha oscillations. So this is uh, the core to the proposed mechanism. Um, so it has several implications resulting in predictions. One strong prediction is that a phase coding scheme is going on, namely that different information is being processed at different phases of the ongoing alpha oscillations. And this phase coding idea we have borrowed from uh, what we know about uh, spatial processing in the red. Uh, you might be familiar with the notion of theta phase precession. So this implies that there are uh, place cells in the red and what you see is that as the red moves through the space uh, there's an advance in the firing of the place cells. So there are some very specific ideas that this sort of phase precession can be explained by a pipelining mechanism. Um, theta oscillations in the red goes up to 10 Hz so they do overlap with the alpha oscillations. Um, furthermore, if you think about the red exploring uh, an environment, uh, that spatial exploration, maybe um, there is some commonalities to us uh, exploring a visual scene. Uh, that's also about uh, linking spatial representations to locations in space. Furthermore, the hippocampus is of course sort of folded into the to the ventral lobe. Uh, so it might be very conceivable that uh, the, the mechanisms for, for, for spatial representations uh, of, as observed in, in the hippocampus also uh, generalizes uh, to the ventral lobe. Uh, furthermore, um, we have made the predictions that alpha oscillations uh, should, uh, the phase of the alpha oscillations should be predictive of when a saccade can occur, right? So simply the saccading and the visual processing need to be coordinated and that implies that the saccades must be locked uh, to the phase of the alpha oscillations in particular during um, uh, 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 stages of visual processing uh, becoming really demanding. Furthermore, um, uh, we argue that uh, there need to be interregional phase synchronization, synchronization in the alpha band, right? So, so for the information to be passed through the visual hierarchy, uh, if, if that has to be done by means of alpha phase synchronization, that also suggests that there needs to be um, a tight phase relationship between the alpha oscillations in the visual hierarchy. So you can actually think about a traveling wave of alpha oscillations going down the ventral stream uh, uh, along the flow of phase coded information to pass forward. And indeed, uh, when for instance looking at intracranial recordings in the monkey, you do, do see a tight phase synchronization between different levels in, in a visual hierarchy. This has also been shown uh, by using MEG as, as, in this, uh, as in this study here out in, in Iran. Um, so I'm going to summarize here and say that um, visual exploration and reading is very demanding in terms of temporal and spatial constraints. Uh, so in order for the visual system to be able to do this, we believe that there is a pipelining mechanism going on, uh, organizing the visual uh, uh, processing in order for that to be fast enough. Uh, uh. Furthermore, uh, we argue that this pipelining mechanism is organized by alpha oscillations uh, to subserve the timing. This results in some very specific um, uh, predictions that, that we hope to address in the future. Namely, first of all, can we find evidence for pipelining and multiplexing in the visual system. Uh, we are about to do the experiments to, 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 to uncover that. Furthermore, uh, when we talk about previewing, uh, there's the question of how deeply are objects of word previewed before we saccade to them. Uh, there's a the notion of face coding, um, namely that different representations are uh, encoding along the face of the alpha oscillations also that we, we want to explore and it also goes hand in hand with the predictions that different regions in the visual hierarchy has to be uh, uh, face locked 
in 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 the alpha band. Um, furthermore, there is something we have not addressed, and that is uh, top-down mechanisms and maybe predictive coding. How is that going to work together with the timing mechanism uh, we have proposed here? This is something that needs to be further uh, uh, developed. I'm going to end here and just uh, point you to our paper in Trends in Cognitive Neuroscience. If you know, want to know more about the details about what I explained here, then uh, you can find them in, in, in the paper here. Thank you very much.